welcome to Chem Talk, where today we will be going over methods to separate mixtures as well as how some of these processes can be used to transform seawater into clean drinking water through something called desalination. Let's begin with some definitions. Chromatography, a technique of separating two components of a liquid mixture based on their relative polarities. Vacuum filtration, Rather than relying solely on gravity for a substance to permeate through a filter, a vacuum suction is applied to the flask to get the substance to flow through faster. And distillation. This process uses differences in the boiling points of components of a mixture to separate them. Now I'll dive into a little more detail on each concept. Let's begin with chromatography. One of the most common methods for this is with a column, so I'll be describing that process. Let's say you have CH3OH and CH4 mixed together, and you want to separate them. The first thing to know is their relative polarities. CH4 is symmetrical and nonpolar, while CH3OH has that highly electronegative oxygen atom pulling hydrogen electrons towards it, and causing one end of the molecule to have a more negative charge and the other to have a more positive charge. Essentially, it is polar. Now let's say we line the column with a nonpolar material. This is called the stationary phase, because the substance that is most attracted to it will begin to slow down or even come to a complete stop as it moves through the column. Then a mixture is dissolved into a polar solvent. This is the mobile phase because the substance that is most attracted to it will continue moving down and through the column without being hindered. The nonpolar CH4 will be most attracted to the nonpolar lining, ending up in the stationary phase, and the CH3OH will be most attracted to the polar solvent, being in the mobile phase. Because of this, the two substances end up getting separated and leaving the column at vastly different rates. This is called the rate of elution. In the end, you may be given a chromatogram to really understand the results. On the x-axis is the time at which the substance exited the column, and y-axis is the intensity or concentration of the substance. In our example, since the polar solvent was the stationary phase, the substance that exited first will be our polar CH3OH. From the peaks being at similar heights, we can see that they were of similar concentrations. It's important to keep in mind that the phases can be reversed, and we could have put in a polar lining and used a nonpolar solvent, reversing the mobile and stationary phases. Vacuum filtration is up next. This is best for filtering solids from liquids. Vacuum filtration uses pressure to create a suctioning effect that filters solutions faster than simply by gravity. A diagram will best explain this concept. You have a flask with a properly folded filter paper on top that's fitted around a funnel. The flask is called a Buchner flask, meaning it has a small opening on the side for a rubber tube to attach to. This is what creates the vacuum effect. Once a machine called an aspirator is turned on, the air from the flask begins being sucked out through the rubber tube, causing the solution to be pulled through the filter faster. The solid particles end up on top of the filter paper and you have the liquid filtrate at the bottom of the flask. Distillation is the use of different boiling points of different compounds to separate them. One trick sometimes utilized is the idea that the lower the pressure is on a liquid, the lower the energy required to get it to boiling point will be. This is because the molecules will be met with less resistance as they begin to spread further apart and transition to the gaseous state. Additionally, oftentimes as the polarity of a compound increases, so does its boiling point. This is because it will require more energy to overcome the intermolecular forces between the molecules. Here's a very general drawing of the distillation process. Here we have a Bunsen burner heating the bottom. Inside the flask on the left would be the mixture of liquids. As it heats, the liquid with the lower boiling point will enter the gas state and travel down this pipe into the flask on the right. The pipe is lined with cool water to recondense the gas back into liquid form and preserve both compounds in liquid state. 
By the end, you should have a compound A in liquid form in one flask and a compound B in liquid form in the other. Separating mixtures can be life-saving for some people. For example, distillation is used in many dry countries to purify salt water into drinking water. Salt water distillation has a special name called desalination. Many countries in the Middle East, such as Saudi Arabia, use desalination. However, it is a fairly expensive process and therefore not available to everyone who may need it. There are multiple methods to perform desalination, but with distillation it involves boiling the seawater so that only the salt remains and then recondensing the evaporated water and collecting it in another container so that you end up with the salt gathered in one place and the fresh water ready for drinking in another. To summarize, chromatography, specifically column chromatography, packs a column with either nonpolar or polar lining and the homogeneous mixture is passed through the column. The compound that's polarity is most similar to the lining of the column will tend to stick to it as the other compound flows right through, resulting in the separation of the two compounds. Vacuum filtration is simply normal filtration but with an air vacuum in the flask, allowing the liquids to permeate through the filter paper faster. Distillation uses differences in boiling points to separate mixtures and can be used to separate both liquid-liquid mixtures or liquid-solid mixtures, as we saw with the example of desalination. So that's all for today on methods for separating mixtures. Thank you for tuning into ChemTalk. Make sure to visit our website, www.chemistrytalk.org, for hundreds of general, organic, and biochemistry articles.